Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel blog post. Today we're going to take a look at how to combine files using Power Query. I'm going to be using Excel 2016, but you can use 2010 or 2013. With 2016, Excel has built Power Query right into the data tab. In the previous versions though, 2010 and 2013, it was an add-on. So you have to make sure you've included that add-on in Excel in order to use Power Query in this manner. But let's see how we can do this in Excel. So here I have a folder that has my sales data for each month from January through June. And if we look at any one of these, I'll open up January, and you can see it just contains the sales data for five customers, uh, the date of that sale, and the amount. Now, all of the files in this folder are structured and laid out the exact same way, which is important when you're doing combining files with Power Query. So, I'm going to go ahead and I'll close that file I just opened. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the Data tab here, and I'm going to start a new query. And in this case, From File, and I can choose From Folder. So I choose that option, and Excel will pop up this dialog box, which I can browse to where that folder is located. I have it on my desktop. It's called Power Query Test Files. I'll choose that, say OK, OK again. Excel will then present to me the six different files that I have, and I'm going to choose Combine and Edit. And Excel will do some calculating and evaluating. And the next thing that will pop up is an option here. It's going to ask me what sheet that the files are on. I'm going to choose Sheet 1, and it'll give me a preview of what that is, the customer, the date, and the sales. I'll say OK, and again, Excel will now give me a preview after it processes the query of what the query may look like. In this case, it also includes the column for source file, so I'm going to select that one and say remove that column. It's removed it. Now I just have the customer date and sales, and now I'm going to choose close and load. And Excel will load into my workbook a table of all those files combined, and it gives me the workbook queries data over here on the right. So if I choose this table, go to my data tab, and sort it in ascending order by date, you can see I have January data all the way down through June. Now from here, I can go ahead and insert a pivot table. I'm going to put it on a new worksheet, and I'm going to throw the sales in the values and the customer and date in the rows column. Now in 2016, Excel will automatically group the data. In this case, it's grouped it by month. So I have that data already set up in that fashion. Now just to add a little more analysis, I'm going to go ahead and choose pivot chart here and just throw in a column cluster chart. I'm going to remove the uh, buttons on the chart. I'm going to go ahead for this sake and remove the chart title and the legend. I'll collapse the workbook queries, remove the field list, and expand my chart a little bit. And now I've created a pivot table with the data for the five customers grouped by month, and I have a chart showing that data. So let's say now it's a couple months later, and I want to add two more months of data to this. Maybe before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and format the sales numbers in my chart, choosing number format, then number, no decimal places, and use my comma as a thousand separator, say OK and OK, and now the values are formatted that way. Okay, so now I have my folder here that has the five months, or I'm sorry, the six months of data that we had, and now I have another folder that has two new months worth of data. 
and I'm going to take and add those two months. I'll move them into my existing folder here. And now I can close those. And I'll go back to my table that Excel created when it combined the first six months worth of data. Go to Design and select Refresh. And now by doing so, if I scroll down, you'll see that it has now added July's and August data automatically. All I needed to do was select my table and click on the refresh button in the design tab and it automatically pulled in that data from those two new files. Now I can go to my pivot table here and do the same thing. Click on analyze, choose, refresh, and now automatically Excel has added those two new months to my pivot table and obviously then my pivot chart has also expanded to include that data. Now if I choose to collapse this data, I'll say collapse entire field, I get it down to the summary level and my pivot chart will automatically adjust so I just see the summary data of the sales. And that's how easy it is to combine files using Power Query in Excel. And there you have it. I hope you like what you see. If you do like what you see here, please take a minute to share this post on your favorite social network. I can be found on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So I hope you enjoy this. If you'd like to see more, please feel free to stop by my website, excel-bytes.com, and I hope you subscribe. So have a great day and happy excelling.